is actually a pig's eye, not your eye. And that's when he takes off his his map patch and he goes, oh yeah, I have got my eye. Yeah, and they so said, this oh, is that, that's a, a great way to get revenge. Actually, it's hilarious. This is the No So Co Po with Jay and Tim. I am Jason Burney and he is Timothy Holm. You'll actually hear Tim in a minute or two in this episode of the Not So Korean podcast. As you probably know, and as we always say, um, we usually record this live in UK's Korea town itself. That's an area in and around New Morden. Yes, that's the largest Korea town and Korean community in Europe. And in this episode, we record it whilst approaching Koreatown or gradually approaching Koreatown. Uh, before I elaborate, I will say that we've got a couple of great interviews coming your way um, from the next episode onwards. We will still be sort of uh, mixing up those episodes with interview, or the interview episodes and other sort of event episodes with these on-the-fly, chit-chat, um, on-the-go sort of episodes, which you're going to hear in a second. So... In this second on-the-fly, on-the-go, on-the-move episode, um, Jay, that's me, and Tim, that's him, uh, are literally, literally on the move, and indeed on the way home, or if you like, on the train. And that is to Koreatown, because we're coming back from a special event arranged by the brilliant people at the London Korean Film Festival and, or well, aka, Korean, the Korean Cultural Centre London, UK. Basically, it was their first Korean film night of 2022 and it was held at one of my favourite independent cinemas in London and that being the Genesis Cinema. The film in question is Kim Ki Young's An Experience to Die For and starring the Oscar winning actress Yoon Ya Jung. This is an early film. The film has also been known or is known as Angel Become an Evil Woman or I believe also with the two titles combined so it's like um, An Experience to Die For, Angel Become an Evil Woman. It was a lovely evening anyway. Uh, we managed to catch up briefly with Dear on Korea. Uh, anyone who knows of Dear may have also heard one of our previous episodes where we interview Dear on Korea. Plus we grabbed a small chat or a little chat with the Korean film expert Mark Morris. After all, it was him that introduced the film on this night. Um, we even have time to speak a little about a film which we've touched on previously and that's the Korean and sort of internationally infused Japanese film drive my car you might ask why that is but basically we've talked about it before and i saw it a second time this day this particular day at the genesis cinema before the korean feature so i wanted to bring up some things that we might have mentioned before uh, related to korea or korean culture or the film itself um that's it and so i hope you enjoy this episode here are jay and tim Of a oh yeah, the climax like, in more ways than one. Like the inside of his body or something, but I wasn't sure if it was his, supposed to be his heart or. Oh yeah, I wondered like was it meat? Oh, I thought it was something. Yeah. I thought it was some sexual was organ it, at one yeah, point, I and know, I was a bit like... concerned. <laughs> yeah, so that that was really that well, that part of the film. I actually the weird thing is about that part of yeah. the film yeah. was that the the poison in the drink or the potential yeah. poison yeah. in the drink yeah. was actually one of the most in enjoyable parts of the film well for me mm -hmm. i don't know about for you was it for you well what do you mean by enjoyable well i mean um we were we were just saying just before we switched on record we were just saying that it was all over the place jumping all over the place yeah, but yeah. because those scenes um with yeo jung yoon yoo jung yoon yoo jung i uh, know sorry not her the other character yes. <laughs> what's her name yeah i forgot her name. the other main girl um she was um because because those scenes were more extended <laughs> Yeah, it was like, it was actually, we, we could follow it, you know, yeah. we could follow it. Someone swapping the drinks over, which is yeah. not a new thing. Well, it was, maybe it was a new thing back then. Mm -hmm. This was, when was it made? 1990 or 89, 88, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah, we're talking about the film, which was called An Experience to Die For. Yeah. We're not sure if the actual experience of seeing the film was to die for. Yeah, but it, it might kill you from laughing, I guess, maybe, just at how yeah. over the top it was. Yeah, yeah it was, a, we, we've just come from the 
London. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't. A, sorry, it wasn't a teaser screening. It was the um, the Korean Film Night by the London Korean Film Festival, aka the KCC UK Korean Cultural Centre, because they also they kind of put it on. And we've just seen a film that was quite rare. It was shown in Busan Film Festival in in that year or around that year. And we've um, we're, we're actually, by the way, we're actually we're actually recording this. Literally, we've we've done a couple of episodes like this where we're we're doing on the move, on the go, on the fly. And we're actually headed to Koreatown, New Malden, which is where our last episode like this was based, and where we're normally um, based. But we thought we'd do this on the way back from the screening. So basically. It was a film that was rarely seen by anybody, um, and the, the sen- we think it was because of the censors or wondering what the censors would do for the film. But the film itself starred Ya Jung Yoon, Yoon Ya Jung, and Kim Ki Young was the director who's done. Sorry, Kim Ki Young, director who's done The Housemaid, yeah, some Woman other, on Fire. Yeah, Woman on Fire, which was also part of the London yeah. Korean Film Festival Yodo, a few months ago. Yodo Island. Uh, do- yeah, that's the that one. Sha- is that the shaman yeah. one, the shamanistic one. And actually, the end scene of that film reminded me a little bit of the the end scene of this film. And what the, the sort of the thing. the bedroom thing? Yes. Yeah, that was it was a bit it was a bit ritualistic. Mm-hmm. It was, it's not Satan yeah. thing, but it was very. Well, there, there's some. A, a snake, a yeah, <laughs> that was it. It, it involves. Uh, yeah, a cobra sort of bells. Yeah. Oh no, sorry, cobra venom, venom. Um, yeah, but she was using these bells like to signify that she was acting like a cobra or something. Like yeah, that was it. Yeah, right. in fact, they, on the soundtrack, because by the way, this film we've seen it was part was re it was um, re um, remastered, re- remastered. in four K. Yeah, and it looked it did look yeah, amazing. Uh, I will say I, I thought the colours were a bit too pink and red in places, but it also looked really good. That was just my, you know, I'm always complaining about something on the cinema screens, but it looked really good. But the sound, it, the sound was over, dubbed, overdubbed. Yeah, overdubbed. Dubbed, yeah, yeah. or post, post, what do they call it, post-sync sound. Yeah, yeah. the sound was um, sort of post-sync sound, but the, the, thing, the thing was, it was very... What I was trying to say about the bells. This we're talking about a particular scene near the end of the film, without being spoiler, yeah. trying to give any spoilers. But there, there's a bit where these these bells are on the, the hand of a woman, and they're they're used in the soundtrack, mm-hmm. or they're yeah. kind of used yeah. in the the ambience, yeah. but they're used quite over the t- you know quite heavily, prominently, prominently, yeah, yeah, yeah. and constantly, yeah. As well as the horse sounds, yeah, and yeah, a few, a few other sounds. <laughs> yes, yeah, some other sounds uh, of a uh, you know bedroom nature, <laughs> um, and I, I that was I mean like Mark Morris who introduced the film he knows sort of everything about Korean film and he did say look he gave, he gave a little bit of information about the film before before it started and um, he didn't he said this is spoiler free although it did tell us the story a little bit so I class it as perhaps potentially spoiler spoilerable but the film. Game sort of yeah, I found that part of the film most interesting, and um, but up to that point, the film was very s- sort of all o- sporadic yeah. and all over the place, yeah. and um, it was. Well, as Mark said before the film, he he, it's possible that the film wasn't actually finished, or at least it has the feeling that it wasn't entirely finished, and actually yeah. the director shelved the film and he didn't want it to be seen for one reason or another. And so I am wondering, yeah. did he actually finish the editing completely, or did he just leave yes. it? You know? Or, or did he? Um, yes, did he? Like Tim just said, did he leave it, or did he get involved half of it and someone else took over, yeah. who maybe had a different idea of how to cut yeah. to other scenes? Mm-hmm. Because there was a lot of that, wasn't yeah. it? There was, oh, there were some other interesting factors which I was thinking about as well throughout the film. We have the bridge, which with Tim was discussing with me earlier. It was the Olympic Bridge, yeah. um, which was. Uh, for 1988 yeah, Olympics. Yeah, it was built sometime in the 80s for the yeah, for the lead up to while. the 1988 Seoul Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, there were some scenes where I noticed in the house or the flat, um, and um, they had a calendar on the wall, or maybe a sort of cloth one. It was 1988. Now, like you said, that could have been 1990. It was filmed, but they just like people keep memorabilia from that that was a very big year for I, I even remember that you know um, Korean Olympics but I, I noticed as well I mean that the along the riverbanks of the Han River you you didn't have that many sky, skyscrapers you had a few buildings and a few but it did look in certain scenes throughout the windows and that you, it seemed like it was almost um, 
you know, almost well, it's quite foggy and misty and that, and um, it wasn't that many buildings because that was the, that was the time back in the early nineties, yeah. late eighties, yeah. early nineties. But interestingly, they did use a lot of sounds that, like that sounded like things were under construction. Yeah. So potentially that was like. You know, showing that things were getting built, maybe yeah, evolving. Along the river. Yeah, because that was almost something he kept going back to. It was almost like a spooky thing. As I say, we're on the train. That's why you can hear that beeping noise. We're literally on the go, <laughs> on the move. And um, yeah, th- there was there was it was almost kind of what did I say earlier? It was like abstract, or it was kind of metaphor or something. The bridge was it was it was really it would show the bridge from a distance, and they would use this really clunking sound from as if it was up close on the bridge. Well, another thing we had regarding metaphor or whatever that we had these paintings of horses in red and um, red paint pictures generally and uh, there's some noises of horses running or or grunting not grunting yeah, what's it? Noises, <laughs> horse anyway. noises and it was all very yeah again abstract I suppose but but going back to that bridge also there was the mention of suicide they alluded to suicide I guess someone's going to jump off the bridge and that I'm not saying that's Korean because it's Korea, because that they have a they have, they're known f- to have you know a high suicide rate, but it could have been any country. You you have a bridge and someone jumps off, but that it has been featured in a lot of other Korean films. Certain bridges, I don't know if it's been that bridge. Yeah. yeah so that was a couple of things, um, and it was it was just it was crazy how the plot. I mean, Mark did say about this at the beginning, but how the plot was it's super it, melodramatic. It's like oh, a yeah. soap opera almost, but yeah. you know, taken to the eleventh degree or something. Yeah. yeah. But we we asked Mark Morris afterwards, and there was a couple of scenes which were really funny in the audience. A lot of these films do come across as funny, and Mark Morris said, um, you know, they weren't to be taken. They weren't meant to be funny. Yeah. Um, he didn't think, but there was there was one scene because there was a repetitive a moment that kept occurring in the film and there was these two, these two guys would burst in on a guy cheating with a woman I'm not going to go into details because that's a spoiler but one of the cast one of the characters and these two men would come in you're, you're committing adultery and they would, they would beat him up or do something and one scene this was one of the strangest and funniest to everybody was they, they, they seemingly took out one of his eyes. Yeah. And then he goes to... He takes that eye that we see in, in a metal tin. Yeah. He takes that real, that full eye yeah. to a um, doctor or yeah, something. Some sort of... Doctor, a yeah. private clinic, maybe, yeah, or something. private clinic. And um, he he just... Um, he says, oh, no, that's a... That's, because the guy who yeah, brings it in has a... His eye. Because he, he but, realizes but, his eye is still in his yes, socket. Yes, because he's because yeah. he's got he's got him with an eye mask, yeah. like an eye patch or something. So we yeah. think he's got uh, his eye is has yeah. disappeared. And he goes, no, what you're holding there in that tin or whatever it's in Korean pig's is actually a pig's eye, not your eye. And that's when he <laughs> takes off his his patch and he goes, oh yeah, I have got my eye. Yeah, no, so this oh, is that, that's a, a great way to get revenge. Actually, it's hilarious. Yes, so I think that was meant to be. Yes, funny, I, I actually. yes I can see yeah. I can see why he would. Because that, there's no way in real life that you would go with... I mean, you first of all, you'd be in great agony, yeah. pain, and you'd yeah. you know, be spurting blood everywhere, I imagine. Yeah. But so there, there was a few moments like that in the film, probably, and more than... And there was some slicing up a live chicken um, well, in the sink. stabbing a chicken, but I don't know... And I didn't see any blood come out of the chicken, so I'm hoping that maybe it was it a fake like, knife or something. No, I, I wondered that, it, but it, was, but it did look quite real. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, you know, we know in The Housemaid there was yeah. always mouse or rats yeah. being used, wasn't there, rats? Yeah, was it right? Yeah. I mean, back the, the original housemaid. But I mean, anyway, that was back then. <laughs> um, things of times have changed, um, even in Korea. Yeah. So, um, and what I was I'm trying to think, I mean, it, it op- the film opens on a kind of a driving school, for, um, and it's mostly women drivers learning to learning to drive. And you have Yoon Yun, um, Jung. She turns up in a car right next to the other main characters. So originally in the film, it's kind of three girls involved. Ya Jung, she's the older woman, a younger woman who's the main character, the other, the other main character of the film, and another early... There's a kind of a love triangle. Um, is it a love triangle? There's another woman involved with a with a man. It's really difficult to explain this, and we're also trying to be deliberately vague because we don't want to be... But, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can read more about this film if you just look it up... Um, and actually on the London Korean Film Festival website or even yeah, it would be on the Genesis Cinema website um, I don't know what we can add about this I was going to mention a couple of things about the film I saw before which we've already mentioned the podcast Drive My Car but is there anything else you want to you can think of in that film that comes to mind um, this is only a brief podcast yeah 
Well, there's uh, lots well, of Mark, scenes of Mark blood. Mark also mentioned that Yoon Yo-jung apparently did not want this film yes. to be part of her own retrospective. So I don't know if that means that she's yeah. not particularly proud of the film yeah. or her performance in it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, mean, it, I was actually thinking that her perform. I've definitely seen her give better performances than this one. Yeah. It, it wasn't like her finest hour or anything. It, it's also difficult to see. I mean, there, I think she did. She did perform well, but is it also difficult to tell when it's overdubbed yeah. or when it's yeah. it's, it's her it's her voice, but it's it's not dubbed spot on. And, and when the material is so, we, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah a bit. When it's so, Odd, let's say. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all exposition for the yeah. first half an yeah. hour. It's like setting it right up. And, oh, and of course, I must mention, that, and there were three young children in it, um, or three children, and there, something bad happens to them yeah. with, with one of the women um, involving a certain vehicle. But it was quite funny to see them acting because they were told to do something. Yeah, and I mean, their, their, their acting, I don't think, was done by themselves because it was sounded like it was almost adults playing children's voices you think? or something. I hadn't really... I hadn't really <laughs> probably was, yeah, because then they were going... But they were saying mummy or mama. Yeah, Amma. but it, was, it sounded kind yeah, of so think, to me. But yeah, I don't know they were obviously instructed to walk to the camera. I mean, this is what happens in filming anyway, but it's it was just... It, the lot, I mean, the audience found it very amusing. We've been to enough Korean films in the last decade or more to know that you know these old films and not just Korean you know, Japanese ones and others yeah, the get laughter quality was not quite at the level yeah. that we know it is today mm. you know and it was sort of um, maybe around 1997 that films really started to improve in quality in Korea I would say yeah in terms of the, at least in terms of the production values you know? yeah you're right I think it was around that time so I'm just going to take a pause this while we change trains and then I'll carry on talking about something else afterwards okay we're on the second train and the next stop that we will be getting off at is New Malden aka Koreatown so yeah overall that film although it was very sporadic and very quickly edited um, and well not quickly edited but it felt a bit of a mess in places you know maybe as Tim was saying to me just now um, Kim Ki Young has got a bit of reputation for certain stylistic ways of doing things um that's what you were saying wasn't it pretty much yeah well i think yeah his style is a bit um it's not a realistic style let's say that yeah right? it's it's kind of over the top like woman on fire yeah. and the one that you were saying just now which was oh which was Yodo. that oh Yodo. Yodo. the island the yeah. island yeah. i mean he's done more than that but they're the ones that sprung to mind yeah um, I did feel like in you know some of it was rushed together, the exposition, and you know like someone had just said let's just write this and put this together. But at the same time, a lot of work had gone into it. Yeah. You know, it's like it wasn't just you know. Um, I mean, and I'm going back to that restoration thing. I mean, I was thinking, wow, this is just like the Get Back, the Beatles Get Back documentary. Yeah. How clear it was. It was yeah. almost like it could have been made Spotless. yesterday. It's like there wasn't any scratches or no. anything on the print or That's right. whatever. There was one bit near that later on, yeah. that, a little bit of uh, yeah. black to hair, dangling. Hair in the gate which they can't really yes, is that's hair in the gate it's that's kind not of a, really part of the film it's part of what the camera shot right yeah, so it was only they on can't that really shot. remove it i it's mean weird. they could technically they could remove it but yeah. it's part of the actual part of the yeah yeah so um i will as i say well, you can read more about this this film that we're talking about on the london korean film festival website and also on probably the kcc uk uh, website and, and elsewhere I'm sure there's um, other people talking about it but we also um, I, I, I went to see I'm just this is a, just an add on bit of information we, I, we we both went to see the Japanese film uh, Drive My Car a few months ago and we mentioned it on our podcast before yeah. um, but I went to see it a second time because it was just before that film at the Genesis Cinema just before that Korean film and it was a three hour film but I thought I'd you know um, go back into it and one thing I was thinking of well, last time we were talking about the Korean element of that film it, you know it ends in Korea even though it's a Japanese film a bit of a spoiler there but it doesn't really tell you much about the story it's set mostly in Japan but I was thinking and this is not necessarily relating to Korea but you know it's set in Hiroshima and I, I was thinking this is great for Hiroshima you know I know Hiroshima has a negative yeah. tone under, 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 under undertones or something negative um, well because of its history and what happened with the Japanese and stuff but I thought it was good to see Hiroshima as the you know as the kind of main one of the yeah. main places in the film but apparently the director originally intended to film the whole film in Korea but oh yeah I think because of Covid or some other reasons yeah. he he couldn't do the whole film in Korea so 
So he moved yeah. to Hiroshima, but yeah, he liked the and, scenery in Hiroshima as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I know that we mentioned this in our last, well, one of our uh, uh, Christmas episodes of the podcast or one of these episodes where we talked about this particular film. We did talk about the fact that it does even incorporate coronavirus yeah. with wearing the masks, mm-hmm. which Tim is wearing his mask now. I keep yeah. putting mine on yeah. and taking it off, as you can probably tell with the sound. But it, So maybe he wanted to include that part because yeah. that was one of the reasons for not having it in Korea fully, right. which right. was that's very interesting. But also, one uh, just a couple of things I noticed from this second time around was, you know, uh, there's, a, there's quite a few Korean characters and, and, and language used in this film. Um, and the, there was, there's, there's various crew that were Korean as well, I noticed. Um, but also, in, in a general kind of m- multi-language film, I think it just does wonders because it shows you how a film can incorporate different languages yeah. and still work in a kind of, you know, oh, which we could all live happily together in this world. It really does do a good job. And even sign language being one of those languages, I just thought to myself that, yeah, you've got Korean in there, Japanese, you've got Philippine, isn't it? Tagalog? Yeah, um, Taiwanese. Taiwanese. Um... English, of course. Oh, yeah, English. Yeah. Oh, the weird thing I did think, though, because we, we mentioned this before, that it's based on a very short a short novel of... Um, Haruki Murakami. Yeah, yeah, of his film. He's a very, very good novelist. Yeah, very famous Japanese novel. Probably the most famous Japanese novelist yeah, in the exactly. world at the moment. Yeah. And I did wonder if that was part of the reason for getting all these awards, because it's, you can't do wrong with his yeah. stuff, because he's a bit of a lovey. Not a lovey, but he's a bit of a... You know, everyone loves his books. Who's into that kind of into into books? I mean, I, I don't know whether that's the reason why it's going to get all these accolades. It's a good film. Don't get me wrong; I wouldn't have seen it a second time otherwise. <laughs> but I, I did wonder that, although it's it's based on a, a very short um, story, it's a very long film, which we mentioned in a pre in a previous episode. But it also it's even the even the play that it's it's kind of it's it's weaved into a, a play and a and a store a play by Chekhov. And I was thinking to myself, okay, this is based on a book, a short story, and it's also, it's not the even the play itself is not original. Right. So I was thinking, yeah. hang on, when you take away the fact that it's Chekhov, we're they're reading because I, I maybe the first time around I didn't even get that that it was Chekhov they were doing on stage. I mean, it's great that you can put characters onto a stage and have them all speak different languages with a kind of um, subtitling yeah. behind the stage. And even sign language, isn't that right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, and that was the Korean. I oh, know she is she Korean. Um, yeah, I think, I think she, she is because she's the Korean yeah. guy's. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I won't get well. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, she's really good anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a moment in the film where the Korean, the uh, the deaf, and she's not deaf. She's just she just she's dumb, I guess. Um, and her and. And this other girl from Taiwan, they have a moving scene together, and I don't know if I missed what the what how the girls reacted, but something happened, and the director says because this is a bit like a meta thing, isn't it? You've got you, it's a bit of like a meta film. You've got like a, a stage play within a film, but you've also well, it's, it's a book, you know, it's a film of a book as well. But I mean, that's not necessarily meta, but. Yeah, no, I just think the second time around, I noticed other things relating to Korea, but into multi 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 language. <laughs> And um, yeah, I'm glad I saw it a second time. The music was just as good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I always wanted when I was younger. I wanted to be a director like you, Jason. I, you're yeah. an actual director, but well, yeah. Um, well, but I always thought, why why doesn't somebody try to make yeah a film like um, let's say British actors, like white British actors who are speaking in another language, like Korean or something else. Yes as their second language yeah. but have the whole film like that I mean it Instead may be of, a bit gimmicky but it would just be interesting to see but something have like subtitles that. though yeah you of course yeah there would have to be subtitles yeah but that, I think that's why yeah. yeah no that's a great that's a great idea and, and uh, but they, they and unfortunately it goes the other way so that we get a Ameri- we get a white person yeah. taking the part of a like you yeah. get like Tom, Tom Cruise doing yeah. the what's that what's that um, that samurai film <laughs> You know, and stuff like that. But no, I, I agree with you. It, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I thought of that years ago, but you you definitely had. But I did think, you know, the fact that it's a Chekhov play and it's based on a book. I thought, hang on, what's the director? I know he's he's a good director. He's clearly a good director. Um, you've seen his other film, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. But um, but I suddenly thought, yeah, but hang on, all you've really all this all this director who's in the film, this yeah. Japanese. Um, is, he's a, is he a director? He's a stage he's director. Stage director. But I thought all he's done really is taken check off and just thought, let me get some international stu- uh, international yeah, artists, yeah, yeah. and that's it. But maybe because he's got to that point in his career that he can literally do anything mm-hmm. and call it art. Yeah. 
I'm not saying it isn't art, but he, it was only this time around I realised it was Chekhov. And anyway, I suppose we're going off the point here that it was more, you know, the Korean elements I was looking out for and drive my car. And um, I think maybe he was interested in seeing, you know, can emotion be delivered through multiple languages? Can you still feel what a character is feeling, even if there's, yeah, you know, I, I different levels of separation yeah. between you? Yeah, no, I did. I think I, I got that as well. And it's, you know, although, and it's in, another thing I found interesting. Again, it's not you know, Rains Park, but we're at Rains Park now, so we've got one more stop to Koreatown. Um, exciting, exciting. Um, it's uh, what time is it now? It's roughly, um, well, it's about twenty past nine now. Twenty past nine in the evening. Yeah, I, I just think it's it's interesting film because although it's, it hovers around this kind of play, this this play multi-language but also the rehearsals and also some let's say some sort of che- cheating going on and you know and um some a character who can't necessarily control his temper with photographers around <laughs> i did think to myself that it's great that it keeps coming back to it's all co- it's called drive my car for a reason because it's folk you know part of the reason is because it focuses on the characters in the car but it's great how it does come back to those characters all the time because she's not the main one of the actors and I love that that she's just the person who's she's just driving the car he's using the car but most I don't know it feels like if if you think about the film afterwards the scenes that you remember are necessarily not necessarily the ones in the car I don't know or the ones on the stage but but somehow it works yeah I think also in that situation where he he's sitting in the back and she's driving the car yeah and a lot of the time they're not talking to each other but yeah. still they have some connection and yeah. even though they come from different background they have a they share a yeah, common very, experience yeah uh, and, and one particular experience i mean yeah. uh yes with the uh, which i won't them. Them. yeah uh, yes um yeah so that's it and I, I like that i don't know if i mentioned this in the, the episode when we did speak about this film um there's a bit where they both hold their cigarettes yeah. uh, in the in the roof um yeah. the, the what do you call it sliding roof um converter um the the, win- the, the wind uh, sorry, sorry the window that's above it's a, a sporty car with yeah. a you know, it's like a you open the, the sliding uh, roof, 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 window, the roof window. My oh, God, <laughs> I've got it. It's cold. That's <laughs> crazy. Lost our English. Yeah, we've lost our English. English. That's it. Yeah, yeah, we've lost our English <laughs> because we're speaking these different. Like, we're talking about these different languages. So anyway, they put their they put, put, put hold a cigarette yeah. out of the car, yeah. and it's almost like I thought maybe a metaphor of like we're holding a flame for mm-hmm. someone or something. That's or or maybe that. It, it's, they've not gone out or something there's something still there anyway so that was it and I love the way that it ends in Korea I noticed that more this time the film actually ends in Korea I won't say how what even the, it could be a bit of an ambiguous ending because I was not completely um, told what has happened so that's it um, you know we'll just wrap it up with that I'll we'll um, be back on course with the next episode and that will be an interview a, a brand new interview yeah perfect timing because we just arrived at New Malden Station. Yeah, so we'll leave it there and um, we'll talk next time. I'll just say the usual thing with Tim and Yongi. Yes, see you. See ya.